Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the new freeform unscripted MC Swigga video. I was gonna do an assholes react, but I, I was just on a time crunch, so I decided I'm just gonna do one of these unscripted videos and talk about something I've always been wanting to talk about for a while, and that's uh, my history with parody songs on YouTube, especially. In all seriousness, I have wanted to do a video talking about this, because it's a subject that I do find interesting, and if it wasn't for this little subgenre on YouTube, I wouldn't have created MC Swigga in the first place, so... I just felt like looking back on like the 2010 YouTube parody videos that kind of got me into doing Swigga songs and yeah, just kind of doing a little retrospective, freeform, off the cuff kind of video. I feel like that's what these kind of videos are going to be for, just kind of talking about general things that I've been nostalgic for or felt interested in talking about. I do have a bunch of other videos like this lined up that don't really fall into specific categories other than these kind of freeform MC Swigga type videos. I was going back and rewatching a bunch of these old videos and I was like, you know what, yeah, like whatever happened to some of these YouTubers and like why did some of them last longer than others, what happened to some of them. Now, the two biggest legends in uh, parody music go to Weird Al and Rucka Rucka Ali. And simply put, I got into them when I was in middle school. And every so often, like, reviews I would watch would reference Weird Al. And at the time, I didn't know because I was just a, like, middle school kid. And so I eventually was like, this guy's really funny. I want to figure out, like, where I can find these songs. And I started listening to them. I went down the, the classic repertoire of Weird Al. Amish Paradise, uh, Eat It, Fat, White and Nerdy, Trapped in the drive through and then I got into his more style parodies, stuff like Dare to be Stupid and Albuquerque, and I really liked those, and I, like ever since then I was just a huge fan of them. And, and same thing with Rucka, it was around the time I was in middle school, and I, I think it was because I overheard two kids in the hallway talking to each other, and one of them said like, hey, you know that song, I Got a Feelin' by the Black Eyed Peas? Yeah, well, there's a guy on YouTube who did a parody called I'm a Korean, and so I was like, what? And so I looked it up, and it was a, a song making fun of Kim Jong-il. <laughs> And uh, ever since then, like, I've went down Rucka's repertoire with some of his old classics, like Go Cops, uh, all the songs he did with, like, Obama, and then years later, the ones he did with Trump. I think by 2013, that was when I officially became, like, a diehard Rucka fan and was just, like, looking forward to all the stuff that he would put out on a regular basis. Then you get to the, the YouTube parodists themselves. Like, Weird Al and Rucka, they post on YouTube, but these guys were definitely more, like, YouTubers that did parody songs. You have people like Venetian Princess, who I actually didn't keep up with that often. I did watch, like, one or two of her parodies back in the day, and really, like a lot of these other people, like, this is what I think of when I think of, like, YouTube musicians or YouTube parodists from back then. It would usually entail them doing a comedic shot-for-shot -shot remake of the original music video with joke lyrics. And Venetian Princess pretty much did a lot of that kind of thing. I remember she did, like, Lady Gaga, parody videos, uh, I think she did Kesha parody videos, uh, Katy Perry music video parodies. The only other thing I can remember about Venetian Princess is another old ass YouTube reference here, but she was kind of in a similar vein of YouTubers like iJustine, where a lot of her videos were just kind of her showing off how hot she was and, you know, doing vlog videos, occasional skit videos. You know, remember back in like 2010, 2011, 2012 when every big YouTuber had to have like five or six channels and it was like, oh, this is my main channel, this is my gaming channel, this is my vlogging channel, this is my behind the scenes channel and then this is a second channel where I post basically the same content. Very similarly to Venetian Princess, one person who I didn't keep up with that often was uh, the Computer Nerd 01. These videos were more in the sense of like Weird Al than they were like someone like Rucka. Like Rucka's humor is definitely like shock, edgy, offensive humor. He was a little bit more like Weird Al. Like his parodies were more like, oh, instead of Alejandro, it's Jalapeno. Instead of thrift shop, it's toy store. It feels like he was trying to do Weird Al type parody songs, all the while having like an on-screen persona that was similar to like Fred back in the day, like because that was what was popular with like really little kids back then. Uh, that's kind of the, the feel that his channel was more like. His videos were more like, you know, oh, this is just squeaky clean, oh, so wacky, lol, random humor. Then you get two channels that I totally remember from back in the day, because I kept up with them a decent amount. Uh, we have Key of Awesome and Bart Baker. Now, Key of Awesome, uh, compared to some of these other people where it was like, it was centered around one person and one person specifically, Key of Awesome, or as they were originally called, Barely Political, 
they pretty much were a team of people. Like they had their own offices. They had like a team of people working on these videos. You had Give Awesome and Bart Baker's style of humor was pretty much doing these like shot for shot parody remake of the music videos. That's pretty much what it was. Uh, how I first discovered these people, a lot of people discovered them through their old Obama girl skits, which were basically these parody uh, election campaign videos where you have a girl in a really tight revealing shirt saying she's gonna vote for Obama. Um, that's another example of old parody videos. Does anyone remember that old parody of T.I.'s Whatever You Like, but it was a guy doing an Obama impression? Does anybody else remember that? That was awesome. I discovered them through their parody of, uh, was it? Yeah, TikTok by Kesha, uh, which was like the first time I ever saw this kind of format where it's like, we're parodying the original music video and we're putting a comedic spin on it. And this time the girl in the video, instead of going out and partying, she's sat down by her family and we have a guy doing a Dr. Drew impression. Back then YouTube clickbait was like MS Paint quality, brightly colored backgrounds and super hot chicks in the thumbnails. And that's like, you might occasionally get that nowadays, but nowadays I think YouTube is more likely to, to flag those kind of videos for like inappropriate content. Even though we're having a fucking new resurgence of those shitty ass Elsa Gate kids channels. Fucking good job, YouTube. It's like their Obama girl videos, almost all of their parodies, if they were themed around like a female musician, almost always had one of their main actresses like in really tight revealing outfits in the thumbnail to get clicks. Every YouTuber was doing that for clickbait. Shane Dawson did it, uh, uh, Philip DeFranco did it, I Justine did it. That's what clickbait was in the early 2010s of YouTube. Nowadays, you just got shit like people doing Macaulay Culkin faces and uh, you know, bright colors to try and get kid audiences and then like they'll put in like Fortnite or some shit in the background. I don't really know what happened to Key of Awesome. I know that they eventually reached 100 song parodies. Cause I remember they had like a big announcement video that was like, oh, we finally reached 100 Key of Awesome parody songs or something like that. Uh, they did a couple of short parodies for a while, but I think eventually they just stopped. I don't know if they just decided they were gonna move on and try to pursue other things. And then we get to another YouTuber that was in a very similar vein of doing like the shot for shot comedic remake parody music videos, except he has, quite an interesting history, and that obviously goes to Bart Baker. <laughs> when Bart Baker started, I remember one of his, like, his very first song parody, as far as I can remember, was, it was a parody of Boom Boom Pow by the Black Eyed Peas, but he called it Big Ol' Pubes. Yeah, uh, needless to say, uh, Chang Chang Chong by Rucka Rucka Ali featuring DJ Not Nice is a better parody of that song. When he first started, like a lot of his parodies fell more into like gross out humor. Like he would get really weird old people to show up and wear really revealing outfits. Like I remember instead of Baby by Justin Bieber, it was horny. Uh, and in California Girls, he made it California Boys. And it was, it was basically just a bunch of pedophile jokes. I think the best one from this era of, of Bart Baker, the best one of them I would say is his parody of uh, Sexy and I Know It by LMFAO and he called it Sexy and I'm Homeless. I think that one was actually pretty funny. And then I think around like 2012 maybe, 2013, that was when he started doing basically what all these other guys were doing and that's just parodying the music video, like almost shot for shot, and then also occasionally throw in references to like something that the musician did at the time, like reference that Justin Bieber puked at a concert or something like that. Uh, and actually like, that was probably my favorite generation of Bart Baker's parodies. Cause I mean, they were at least consistent. Uh, and I, I did like some of them. Like I remember he did the Wrecking Ball parody. That's what I discovered him from. Cause I remember when Wrecking Ball first came out and the music video was everywhere. I remember uh, like on the news, like on New Year's Eve, they were like, R Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus has gone viral. And here's just a quick compilation of people who've parodied the sensation. And really quickly they showed a clip from his. And it was like, oh wow, this guy got Steve-O and Ron Jeremy to show up in his parody of Wrecking Ball. That's impressive. Then I noticed that Bart Baker started doing some experimenting. He started doing videos that were original songs. Like he started doing original rap songs under the name uh, Lil Clorox. And they weren't anything amazing, but I thought they were fine for what they were. Uh, he started experimenting with like skit videos. Like he would do these like parody videos of 
uh, like and, and Entertainment Tonight and all this like celebrity gossip stuff. I remember like by 2016, when he started doing parody songs, he started interjecting a bunch of like current events into them just so that he could like say, oh, this is about a trending topic. Like his parody of uh, Watch Me Whip, Watch Me Nene by Silento. I remember in that video, he like near the end of the song just inserts Jared Fogle into it because, oh, Jared Fogle was a like a huge thing people were talking about in 2015 or whatever. He did a parody of Work by Rihanna featuring Drake. And then near the end of the song, it just randomly turns into a plug for Deadpool, which was out at the time like it just became one big like oh Deadpool's in the music video now and he's dancing with them and then like you know he kills them and says that he has a movie coming out I remember a bunch of people were talking about this when it first happened and like when the videos for it first surfaced I remember hearing that Bart Baker quit YouTube and like because I think he was partnered with like Maker which was like a really big thing at the time and then eventually Maker just fucking fell apart and you know a lot of people had to migrate and find you know find partnerships elsewhere but I remember Bart Baker signed up with some Chinese company and he actually moved to China. And it was basically videos saying to worship the, 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 the Chinese government. Like there's a bunch of videos of like this bleach blonde Californian dude going on about like, oh, don't buy iPhones. That's what America wants. Buy this knockoff iPhones that are made in China. And it, it's really creepy. It is really fascinating how you go from doing big old pubes to a video with Ron Jeremy and Steve-O parodying Miley Cyrus swinging naked from a wrecking ball to that. It is like the weirdest fucking timeline ever. But yeah, that was just something that was on my mind, something I was thinking about and just felt like doing a quick video kind of reminiscing and being nostalgic for uh, the old parody songs that I used to watch that eventually led to the fine little MC Swigga that you see today. I'm gonna try and do more videos like this. Uh, I'm currently in a new location. I'm not filming this in the usual Swigga location because like I said before, the basement is being worked on. Uh, eventually when it's finished, I will go back there. But for now, I'm just filming in a, in a spare office that I have, so. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and do more videos like this. Talk about like some old YouTube stuff, some stuff that I'm nostalgic for when it comes to like internet culture every so often. Uh, just, you know, every so often, whenever I can, you know, if I don't have a swig of game review or Bias News Network or Assholes React lined up, this is usually what I'm gonna do just to kind of make up for it. So anyways, guys, I look forward to more MC Swig of content. There is a new parody song in the works, new Swig of game review, and I have stuff lined up for this coming month. So look forward to that when it comes out. Until then, y'all, Ruckus Knuckles for life. Peace out, represent.